In this video, I will tell you about the book that changed the way I think about past and future. The name of the book is Stumbling on Happiness. If you don't become aware of the things written in this book, you risk predicting your future wrong. If you watch and understand this video, you will be aware of the tricks your brain is playing on you right now. In the end, I will give you the answer. Will you be happy or not? The past. Did you know that our eye has a blind spot? Because of the way connecting nerves block retina, our brain fills in the missing information. That blew my mind. We are walking around with a hole in our vision and our brain constantly fills in the missing information. That is crazy. That doesn't end there. Our brain constantly fills in the information from the past. Let me explain. Have you ever thought about the way we remember things? Do you think our brain records every little detail? Where does it store everything then? Do we have the capacity to remember everything? Of course not. Our brain remembers only key memories. Usually it's the most emotionally charged memories. Every time we recall something and trying to remember things, our brain picks up those key elements and creates the rest, fills in the blank spots from the past. We only remember key elements and fill in the blanks. Every time we remember something, we recreate and rewrite memories. Imagine you're trying to tell a story to your friend about your last vacation. And when you remember things, you remember the key elements. For example, oh my god, the view was stunning, mountains were so beautiful. That was your key element, beautiful mountain view. And in your mind, your brain fills in and creates the gaps. It, it creates the picture from everything that you know about beautiful mountains, about beautiful views, about the vacations, about places you visit, and it constructs and rewrites that memories in the real time, in the present moment. It kind of generates the memory specifically tailored for you in that moment. That blew my mind. And when I thought about it after, I totally agreed. Every time I tell a story, it sounds slightly different because I change as a personality. I grow, my views change, my taste changes. And the stories, the outcomes, the way I view things change. And the story that I tell and I've been negative about in the past might be very positive story in the future. But what about the future, you might ask? The future. The same way our brain comes up with the stories when you're trying to remember the past, it comes up with the stories when you're trying to predict the future. And oftentimes it's wrong. This is incredible trick your brain plays on you. And it does so all the time. You might ask, why is it wrong? Every time we think about the future and trying to make predictions, it is always based on how we feel in the present moment. For example, if you feel depressed, you feel like it's gonna go on forever. Or let's say you had a little too much to drink last night. You promised yourself to never drink again. Was that ever the case? Days go by and you are happier than ever and ready to have another drink. Your predictions were wrong. You feel different about things now. I guess your predictions were wrong. And if you start noticing, you do it all the time. We cannot predict the future that is really far away from us. It will always be based on the present moment and the way we feel now. That made me think so much about my life and what my brain does in the background. It is prediction making machine. It is guessing machine. It is the best storyteller in the world. But how true are those stories? Author of this book demonstrates a lot of different experiments that show how our brain tricks us and how often we are false about how we feel and how we are going to feel in the future. In the end, 
the author gives a very simple answer on how to predict how we're going to feel in the future. Are we going to be happy or not? And here is the answer. Imagine you're given a chance to eat in a nice restaurant for free, but beforehand you're asked to predict the level of your satisfaction about the meals. And you have given two options. Option one, you will have to predict the level of your satisfaction by yourself. And option two, you will have to predict the level of your satisfaction based on reports of the people who already done this experiment. What would you choose? People from this experiment chose to predict on their own because we want to be and feel unique. But in the end of the experiment, people who chose to predict their level of satisfaction based on reports were really close to how they felt in the reality. And people who chose to predict on their own were wrong and changed their minds afterwards. And by showing this experiment, the author wants to show us next. The best way to predict the future is to ask someone who already experienced the future you imagined. We are not as unique as we think we are. And there is already someone out there who is experiencing something that you are just planning or imagining to do. And the best way to predict how you're going to feel in the future, will you be happy or not, is to ask someone who has already done it. It made me sad at first because I truly believe that there is someone already doing things that I dream about. From the other side, I also believe that I will have a unique experience. But something tells me that the person who is already there has a lot of insights to tell me about how does it feel to be there. For example, Right now, I'm growing my YouTube channel and I'm dreaming about the day when I become famous, when I receive my gold button, when I have thousands and thousands of views and the day when I can become completely free and remote, do what I love and make money for a living. And the best way to predict how is it going to feel to be that big YouTuber is to find someone who has already done it. And I do have a lot of role models I imitate or try to follow because they have already done it and I can do exact same steps but in my own way, adding my own personality and my own twist. But that gives me hope if they have done it, I can do it as well. That opens up something in my mind. It confirms to my mind that this is possible and that keeps me going. The same comes to money. If you want to become rich, you find someone who is already good with money and imitate what they are doing. If you want to buy a house in some neighborhood, you can ask someone who lives there, how is it to own the house in that neighborhood? And that person will gladly tell you all pros and cons of living in that area, in that house or buying a car. The owner of your dream car can tell you exactly what's good or bad about this car and how you possibly can feel when owning this car, once you own this car. This book made me think in a different way. And as always, my friend, I believe in you and I see you in the next one.